where things stand is Cressa Pugh. She's an assistant professor of sociology at the New School. Cressa, thanks so much for joining us. I believe you're part of the first faculty-led Gaza encampment in the country that was launched at the New School in New York City, where you are. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Yeah, of course. So um, thanks so much for having me, first of all. Um, so the faculty at the New School launched our encampment, which you said is the first faculty encampment in the nation, um, in part because it was a response to a very violent state-sanctioned state uh, shutdown by the NYPD of our student solidarity encampment, which happened last week. And so after that happened, this violent, which in, in involved um, a, roughly 43 deeply violent arrests of our undergraduate students. These are 18 to 22 year olds. They're very peaceful. They're just asking for um, a vote um, to divest um, from investments in Israel in addition to other things. Um, and these students were having a peaceful protest. They were sleeping in their tents and at 7 a.m. Uh, many dozen NYP op NYPD officers, sorry, the New York Police Department officers break in um, to the encampment and violently arrest the students and force the removal of the encampment. So in response, the faculty launched our own encampment last week. And despite, you know, the reaction from local authorities and police officers, these protests are continuing. In some cases, they're getting larger. Has there been any success in terms of, you know, the calls for div divestment at all? We are we are in the process of, uh, you know, really just trying to assess what kind of progress uh, we can count as uh, successful. So we have five demands, um, divestment from the 13 arms and surveillance manufacturers that the new school is invested in, um, an academic boycott of its really institutions, it's not people, institutions, um, a dismissal of academic disciplinary and criminal charges, which were leveraged against our students um, when the uh, encampment was raided, um, ending NYPD collaboration, and lastly, an election um, for the new school student workers union, um, which is trying to um, unionize. So in an effort to promote worker solidarity, we're also calling for an election for the student workers union. And so, so far, we have not had any success uh, getting a, a we're, we're meeting with our president uh, tomorrow morning to discuss whether or not we will be able to get a meeting with our board of trustees for the university, and out of that hopefully will come a conversation on divestment and a vote. Mm. Some uh, Jewish or pro-Israeli uh, students and protesters say that they're experiencing anti-Semitic uh, or, you know, or Zionist attacks on campus. What's your experience? Have Jewish American students joined in these pro-Palestinian movements, or have there been counter-protests as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, one thing that I just have to mention is that, you know, one of the questions that I've long had since October 7th is why are we talking about, um, you know, essentially why are we not talking about Islamophobia um, when we mention anti-Semitism, right? So 40,000 plus Palestinians have been killed. Um, not That doesn't minimize in any way um, the Jews that were killed, um, the Israelis who were killed um, on October 7th. But, um, or sorry, you know, before then, but what I think is a rhetorical strategy of the center right is to kind of minimize the sense of Islamophobia that protesters, um, you know, and, and, and just Muslim people in general have been feeling since October 7th and use it as, you know, kind of a, a cover for like some kind of like, uh, you know, anti Semitic, mm. uh, you know, protest. But I will say that I, I would absolutely never deny. Um, that there has been anti-Semitism on campus. All I know that any anti-Semitism that has happened has indeed not come from our protesters. It's not come from our encampment. It's never come from our students or faculty. There are outside agitators who have come onto campus and who've said deeply, um, you know, anti-Semitic things, and we've immediately removed them from campus. There is no place for anti-Semitism in this movement, but there is and should be a place for us to discuss Islamophobia. And absolutely, there have been plenty of Jewish students. Yep. The, the rabbi, the Jewish rabbi of our university, has been part of the um, of, of the um, of the protest and of you know of the organizing and of the encampment. So we're deeply, deeply not just inclusive of our Jew Jewish community, right. but we rely on them in order for this movement to be successful. 
Yeah, the, the UN member nations have voted overwhelmingly to back Palestinian membership bid and statehood. The US has vetoed it. How has that impacted students, uh, you know, their perspectives and the way that they, ha you know, stand in these protests now? And also, how do they think about US politics under the Biden administration, given what's happening in Gaza? Has it shifted their perspective, especially in the lead up to, the, to this year's election? Well, the fact that, you know, Biden and his government have not, uh, have essentially, you know, created this kind of blockade within the UN, um, you know, for a number of measures. Um, I, I, like, I personally, as well as many of my students and colleagues and friends, um, and, and just my generation in general, like young people, you know, um, as, uh, Democrats, right? Uh, people on the left, progressives, um, liberals, you know, whatever you want to call us, we have absolutely no faith in Biden whatsoever. Mm. And so I'm absolutely not planning to vote for Biden. I don't think that Palestine being recognized, I mean, that's obviously wonderful, but that's not something that we can affect on campus. What we can affect on campus is a divestment strategy, and that's exactly what we're pursuing. So now that college is finished and schools are essentially closing, is this over, or will students regroup elsewhere and continue? It's not. It's never will be over until Palestine is free. We will continue these demonstrations until Palestinians are treated as humans, not second-class citizens. So where will they go, though, if this if the actual campuses are closed? Um, campuses are not closed over the summer for professors. I mean, that's uh, right. not, not you know, at liberty to, to divulge our strategies at this point over the summer, but I will be sticking around over the summer and mm -hmm. my new school ID will continue to work. So, you know, if you're lucky, you might just see me on campus this summer. <laughs> All right. Well, look out for you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you Thank so you. much.